Here is how you treat momentum and impulse in two dimensions. Remember that momentum is a vector that is the product of the mass and velocity of an object. The impulse on an object is equal to the change in momentum of that object. They both have their use in the application of Newton's second law that can be expressed as the net force on an object is equal to the rate of change of momentum of that object with time. When the motion requires an expression in two dimensions, then the equations pertaining to momentum, impulse, and net force also need to be treated in component form. To demonstrate this visually, we will borrow the simulator from phet.colorado.edu. Here is the setup we will use. We will switch to advanced. We will be using only one ball we will slow the simulation down we will keep elasticity at 100 and keep the reflecting border we will also fine tune our simulation with more data and place the ball close to the right edge of the borders. In our first simulation, We'll use a small mass ball with an initial x velocity but zero y velocity. Notice this input will make the collision with the ball one dimensional. You do not need to reach for your calculator as the simulator already calculates the components of the momentum for you. Keep your eye on the momenta as we play the simulation. Notice that because we treat the wall as an immovable object and the collision is 100% elastic, the rebound of the object had an equal magnitude momentum in the x 
and the y direction as before the collision. Mathematically, if you were asked to calculate the impulse on the object, which is the change in momentum of the object, the momentum was already calculated for you by the simulator, and hence you just need to apply the arithmetic. The negative sign just means that the impulse on the object is in the negative x direction. Here is a second example. This time we will have the collision be at an angle. Let's reset our simulator. And again, pay attention to the calculated components of the momentum. Notice that the magnitude in both the x and y direction was preserved. In the x direction, the momentum changed signs. In the y direction, it did not. If we calculate the impulse in the x direction, it will have a similar treatment as before, only with different numbers. Note that the numerics are slightly off due to rounding errors. In the y direction, using the same kind of math, we find that the impulse is zero. The reflection did not change the y component of the momentum. By extension, there was a force on the ball by the wall in the negative x direction, but there was no net force on the object in the y direction. To calculate the net force, of course, would require knowledge of the total time of collision. The viewer is of course encouraged to practice understanding the impulse on the object upon reflection using the simulator with various inputs.